Threshold, a poem by the American poet Maggie Smith. You want a door you can be on both sides of at once. You want to be on both sides of here and there, now and then, together and what did we call the life we would wish back? The old life, the before, alone. But any open space may be a threshold, an arch of entering and leaving, crossing a field, wading through nothing but Timothy grass. Imagine yourself passing from and into, passing through doorway after doorway after doorway. At the waning of the penultimate day of creation, right before the first Shabbat began, something extraordinary happened. In the threshold between the enormity of the sixth day of creation, when humanity was formed, and the awe of Shabbat, we learn that God created 10 more things. During that space between day and night, between light and dark, in this liminal twilight, when the horizon was filled with radiant colors of sunset, a time when we assume God was already moving into Shabbat rest, God actually continued to create. In a Mishnah from Pirkei Avot, we learn the 10 things that God created in this time. The mouth of the earth that swallowed Korach, the rebel, and all evil. The mouth of the well that provided water for the Israelites in the wilderness. The mouth of the donkey that spoke to Balaam, the sorcerer. The rainbow as a sign to Noah. The manna, the staff, the shamir, the strong cutting stone used to cut stones to build the temple and the gems on the breastplate of the high priest, and the letters, and the inscription, and the tablets themselves. The Mishnah teaches us a great deal about this twilight moment of creation. In fact, our sages give this time its own name, Ben Hashmashot, the threshold between two lights. By giving this time a name and a set of halachot of Jewish laws that pertain only to this time of twilight and dawn, the rabbis elevate its significance. They recognize the fragile nature of this time and our daily experience of living, this doorway of space between two times. In this doorway moment, God created in this tiny window of time, just as God was about to pass on the sacred work of the world to, the human be to human beings, God made these last important creations that would be critical to the future. A source of nourishment and blessing, a framework for relationship, for kindness, for creative energy, and a guide for sacred living. We learn that this threshold provides a space for embracing life's most important lessons. In liminal spaces, one holds deep memories from the past, yet also sees the potential of the future, even without having arrived there yet. And because of that, the space between is often filled with fear uncertainty and trepidation. It is a space where we don't know what's next or if what came before will return. In fact, it is taught that on the day of their creation, that Adam and Eve, in this very moment before Shabbat, were overcome by a grave worry as the sun began to set. Not knowing why the sun was disappearing and fearful of what would happen in the dark, they began crying and ask God, 
What could we have possibly done wrong to deserve such darkness? They were terrified because they didn't have any perspective. They didn't have any past experiences with darkness, no expectation of morning light. But of course, dawn arrived, and as the sun's rays peaked over the horizon, they were overcome with emotion and offered prayers of gratitude to God. And so if we are fearful of approaching darkness, why is this time often so visually beautiful? Why does the space between linger? I believe it's because the most basic and sacred of life's lessons live in that space where we are able to find and cultivate what really matters in life. In this threshold, we experience both a fear of the unknown and an excitement of what may come next, where we may gain a new sense of perspective on the past and the potential of the future. In March of 2020, we were told to prepare for just two weeks. Two weeks turned to two months, two months to a year and a half, and we are still very much bain hush mashot in the space between two lights, the time before the pandemic and the lights that are yet to be seen on the other side. And if I slow my mind for a moment, I can clearly remember those first days of this threshold where we were most concerned with having enough food and toilet paper. It certainly doesn't get much more basic than that. We tried to find hand sanitizer and Clorox wipes, always waiting for the next grocery pickup or delivery window to open. We narrowed our focus to just meeting our most critical needs. We quickly recognized that which is so basic and fundamental to our lives for an entirely new purpose, a sacred purpose. FaceTime and Zoom became holy and full of blessing. Our computers became our portals to one another. And every in-person interaction we had felt like an opportunity for meaningful connection because of its infrequent and necessary nature. When else have we worked from home in the way we have throughout this pandemic? Some have had two, three, even four generations back in their family home, living and working, schooling, cooking, celebrating, praying, Zooming together. At TBE, we have learned to pray and study Torah in new ways, from the couch to the backyard, at the kitchen table or home office. We've given ourselves to help those in need, spiritually, emotionally, financially. And we realize the magnetic power of connection and community from a new perspective. We began to recognize the lessons of this threshold time, truly entering into the sacred betweenness where God created at twilight. And this moment has held great complexity. While this has been a time of opportunity and growth, it has also been deeply painful and traumatic. We've experienced profound grief and loss, anxiety, isolation, and illness. We've confronted death both broadly in our world and of loved ones most dear to us. And at the same time, many of us have let go of expectations and preconceived notions that we used to chase after. We've been able to refocus and find balance where we may not have felt it before. Because when we live in that threshold, when we pause and linger there, even when it's hard and scary, even when we didn't choose it for ourselves, we find the fundamental life lessons within Bain Hashmashot. Now, interestingly, when we narrow our focus to the core values in our lives, 
we are also able to tune in more fully to the problematic realities in the world that need our attention. In this in-between time, we have seen new light shed on economic and food insecurity, the impact of structural oppression, the lack of housing, increasing mental health needs with limited provider access. And because of this increased awareness, many are working towards solutions for now and the future. And I'm proud that our community is leading the way in this work. And this space in time has created unprecedented access to our communal life. We can now imagine a future that ensures accessibility for people who couldn't come to the temple or engage in classes and couldn't be in person-to-person -person conversation. We wouldn't have created these possibilities but for the liminal space we were forced into. We've always known what is truly important in our lives. But sometimes it becomes blurry and hard to access. In our pre-pandemic lives, we were always stepping through the doorway and onto the next obligation, not even noticing the space between. But in the last 18 months, we've gained more clarity on what matters most because we stopped and we became aware of the threshold in which we are living, the threshold where God exists and where God creates with us. I thought of this a few weeks ago when our children switched bedrooms. After everything was moved around and set up, beds made, clothes put away, stuffed animals lined up just right, here, 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 not there, you get the idea. My daughter, Elsie, walked over to her old bedroom doorway, touched her hand to the mezuzah, and said, we need to move this too. In my life, I have touched a mezuzah thousands of times. We have them on, every on the doorway of every room here at the temple. And many of us have them throughout our homes. Elsie's simple statement helped me realize something I never stopped to consider before. That held within these doorway thresholds are sacred directions for how to focus on the in-between. Inside of every mezuzah is a cloth, a parchment, with the words of the Shema and the Vihafta inscribed on them, just as they are in the Torah. Inscribe them, the mitzvot for sacred living, on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. If among the ten things that God created at twilight were the letters in this inscription, then each time we pass a mezuzah, each time we acknowledge it and touch it with our hands, we have the potential to transport ourselves to that in-between space, that time of creating at twilight. We've spent so much of the last year focusing on life's most important lessons, trying to discover what this moment will teach us. And yet our tradition has had it in plain sight all along. Literally. It's as if the mezuzah is saying, this threshold is an important place. Linger here. Remember what God created in that liminal place on the eve of the first Shabbat. Stay here for a moment. Don't rush through this doorway. The mezuzah can be this sacred speed bump, a reminder of the beautiful, enormous potential in this place. And with this awareness, we can refocus and clarify what is important and identify how we will realize these possibilities and our dreams and creations for the future. And tonight, we enter into another deeply important Bein Hashmashot, the Aseret Yimei Tshuva, 
the 10 days of awe and repentance between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. These days when the spiritual gates of heaven are open, asking us to reflect on what we have learned in the last year and what we want to bring forward to the next one. The words of the mezuzah parchment exist not only on doorways, but also upon our gates, even the ones that swing open tonight. And we stand as a community in front of these gates, beginning this time of reflection, which ends on Yom Kippur, at Ni'ilah, with a piyut, a liturgical poem, Petach lanu sha'ar, open a gate for us when the gates are being closed, for the day is about to fade. The day shall end, the sun shall set. Let us enter your gates. In this new year of 5782, may we have the strength to recognize how our lives can be transformed when we linger in the doorways of life, the space between two times. And whenever we cross those thresholds. May we bring forward the sacred knowledge of all that we found there, doorway after doorway after doorway. Shana Tova Umetukah.